Does being gay influence your creativity and your work? Um, I think for my generation uh, and preceding me, because um, when I when I came when I realized I was gay, it was illegal to be gay at that time. It was classified as a mental illness. Um, you know, you really were a marginalized freak as far as society was concerned, and that brings out a lot of creative rebellion in people, I think, and. Uh, so it produced a lot of um, people who were sort of angry, creative, reinventing things, turning things upside down. You know, it's hard to imagine designers like Versace or um, Terry Mugler, Claude Montana. It's hard to imagine them emerging now because they emerged out of a sort of uh, creative rage. And you even saw that with you know, Galliano, McQueen, those boys were younger than me, but they were they grew up in an environment which was extremely anti-gay, in a homophobic milieu. To grow up in working class England is to grow up in a homophobic milieu. And in both their cases, I think it produced this sort of creative rage that produced magnificently strange and intriguing and interesting stuff. You know, I have a friend who works in a psychiatric institute, and she she said to me, fashion people are like, they're like insane people, because she said, in my hospital, where all the mental patients are, the people constantly see patterns where there are none. <laughs> you know, like, she has patients who say, oh, you're right, blah, blah, you know, they're connecting dots which don't exist. And she said, fashion people are just like that. And I said, well, they've become like that. You know, fashion editors spread out all the pictures from the season, and they say, oh, look, an orange bag at Celine and an orange shoe at, you know, Tory Burch. Orange is the new blah, blah, blah. I thought you were going to ask me about my fixation with all the designers that died of AIDS. All right, I will. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> well, yes, as you, as you know, this is one of my, yes. my bete noirs. Is, um, it's actually my main bete noir. I remember um, in the early 90s going to visit, or the late 80s, a friend of mine who was dying of AIDS. He was a very good looking guy who was a model who then became a photographer called Jeffrey Herman. And he said he was very angry, very bitter. This is before the retroviral drugs came along. And he said to me, everyone's going to die and we're going to be forgotten. And I always think of that and I realize it's basically true. You know, this entire generation of creative, interesting, great fashion people are basically being forgotten. And I'm talking about Perry Ellis. Halston. I mean, lots of young people don't even know Perry Ellis was a person. They think it was some brand name. Right. You know, everyone from Tony Viramontes to Willie Smith, it's an endless, endless list of, of people who were very pivotal in the fashion business or not pivotal, just in the fashion business. You know, great people, people who were just hitting their stride. It's a huge, long list of Ones you know about, like Patrick Kelly, Angel Estrada, all these people have not been appropriately memorialized. So I always take the opportunity to remind people and young people, do your fashion history. You should know who Willie Smith was. He was a fantastic African-American creative powerhouse, you know, who is basically, um, you know, was blindsided by this disease. And uh, so that's one of my things like honor the honor our our fashion heroes who have fallen